Hi, my name is uh, Ashwin Joshi and I am at the Schulich School of Business at uh, York University. Today I'm here to present uh, my forthcoming article in the Journal of Product Innovation Management. My article is titled, When Does Customer Orientation Hinder or Help uh, Radical Product Innovation? The Role of Organizational Rewards. This article is forthcoming in the July edition of the Journal of Product Innovation Management. Um, before I begin describing the article, I would like to take a brief moment to thank uh, the editor and uh, the editorial team for giving me uh, this opportunity. I think it's a great way to, uh, to disseminate knowledge and indeed uh, to learn from you uh, in terms of feedback that you will give me about, uh, about the article. So I will now walk us through the, the basic points that are covered in the article. So there are two concepts that I want you to pay attention to right at the beginning, customer orientation and radical product innovation. Customer orientation, uh, th there's a classic definition, but in simple terms, customer orientation is the organizational belief that if you serve customers, profitability will follow. As uh, Deshpande, Farley, and Webster more formally stated, the set of beliefs that, put cu that puts customer interests first, while not excluding those of other uh, stakeholders, in order to develop a long-term profitable enterprise. So customer orientation is the belief in the primacy, if you will, of, of service customer interests. Radical product innovation, which is the other key concept, um, we draw from um, the classic definition by Chandy and Tellus uh, from 1998, and they stipulate two dimensions, if you will, to this notion of radical product innovation. A radical product has two characteristics. It incorporates substantially different technology from existing products, and it can fulfill customer needs better than existing products. So for example, in, com uh, in comparison to a landline, a cellular telephone represents a radical product innovation because it meets those two criteria. Different technology and serves, uh, provides customers with uh, additional benefits. So the puzzle that we're going to address in the uh, that exists in the literature and in, indeed in the minds of many practitioners as well is what is the relationship between customer orientation and radical product innovation? Does engaging with customers, getting deep into their headspace, getting deep into their lives, does that indeed help the production of radical product innovation or does it hinder it? There are arguments, as I say, both, uh, both for the help uh, perspective and for the hinder perspective. So if we look, for example, if we unpack the hinder perspective, why customer orientation will hinder radical product innovation, the arguments are as follows. Christensen and Bauer make the argument, for example, that, that customer orientation will hinder radical product innovation because as an organization, you get locked into a particular set of customers. Uh, and once you get locked into those customers, you also get locked into their technology. As a result, you stop developing new technology and your performance at radical uh, product innovation diminishes. That's called the customer power argument. There's also a tight coupling argument uh, made by Daniels that, uh, that, that then culminates in the same uh, uh, conclusion, which is that customer orientation hinders radical product innovation. The help perspective. Why, does, why would customer orientation help radical product innovation? The arguments here is, are as follows. Govind Rajan, Kopale, and Dan Niels in a superb article in the Journal of Product Innovation Management in 2011 make the case that what customer orientation does is it gives you deep insights into the minds of those customers. And those deep insights then motivate the search for new technologies. In other words, the search for radical product innovation. Uh, Narver and Slater in their classic paper on the subject also make the same argument that customer orientation stimulates generative learning. So the question, having reviewed the literature, the question we ask then is which is it? Does it help? Does it hinder? The position that we take around the help or hinder question is that organizational context determines whether customer orientation will help or hinder radical uh, product innovation. And the particular organizational context variable that we're looking at is the reward system that the organization administers to its new product development teams. And we look at two types of reward systems, an outcome-based reward system and a strategy-based reward system. An outcome-based reward system rewards the new product development team for successes. In other words, if a product meets um, all of the projections laid out in terms of market performance, the team will be rewarded. That's an outcome-based system. A strategy-based system is that the team, the new product development team is rewarded if the new product 
um, uh, changes the rules of the game in the industry. So our strategy is differentiation. And if this new product truly differentiates uh, the, the company in that particular marketplace, the team is rewarded. So two um, uh, uh, reward systems, outcome-based and strategy-based. And our argument, essentially, is that we can uh, tease out the difference between the help argument and the hinder argument depending on the type of reward system that is in play. The two hypotheses that we offer in this paper are, one, that customer orientation will hinder radical product innovation in the presence of an outcome-based reward system. H1. H2, customer orientation will help radical product innovation in the presence of a strategy-based reward system. So how did we test these arguments? We collected data from manufacturing firms in, uh, in three different uh, uh, industries, uh, general machinery, electrical, electronic machinery, transportation equipment. Uh, we, sam we, uh, we reached out to 837 uh, manufacturing firms, and finally uh, were able to uh, get completed questionnaires from 156 of them. We also collected data from 96 customer firms, uh, uh, and particularly on this notion of radical product uh, innovation. What do our results show? Well, in, uh, the results in, in brief bear out both our hypotheses. With respect to the hinder perspective, I'd like to, uh, you to look at the graph that is, uh, that is on display at the moment, and I'd like you to focus in particular on the, dotted, uh, on the dotted line. As you will see, the dotted line is downward sloping. Uh, and what does that suggest? That suggests that in the presence of an outcome-based reward system, high outcome-based reward system, as customer orientation increases, our ability to generate radical product innovation declines, thus substantiating the hypothesis that, that in the presence of outcome-based reward systems, customer orientation uh, hinders radical product innovation. The help hypothesis, the arguments for the, the results for the help, help hypothesis are now uh, uh, presented. I again ask you to focus on the dotted line. This time it's upwardly sloping. What do these results suggest? These results suggest that in the presence of strategy-based reward systems, as customer orientation increases, the incidence of uh, radical product innovation increases as well. Okay? So what are the implications? Why is this uh, research, in our view, interesting and important? From a theoretical perspective, it addresses a long-standing puzzle in the discipline about the impact of customer orientation on radical uh, product innovation. We are by no means the first scholars or, uh, to address this particular issue. Others have. But we provide a unique perspective uh, on, uh, on, this, uh, on this debate. And I, in, in my view, that's what makes the article worth reading. From a practitioner perspective, uh, there are various implications that come out of this. One, it says to managers who are interested in developing uh, radical new products, first thing you should do is develop customer orientation in your new product development teams. Okay? That is critical. The second thing you should do, the article says, is that you should incent them using a strategy-based reward system. What you should avoid and avoid at all costs is an outcome-based reward system. Because once you put that in place, the incidence of radical product innovation declines. So from uh, an overall perspective, we contribute uh, to the literature by uh, addressing a long-standing puzzle. And we contribute to practice by telling managers how, what exactly they can do to develop radical product innovation. Given the impact of radical pro uh, product innovation on a uh, firm's profitability, we believe uh, that uh, these findings are, is, uh, are important and interesting from a managerial perspective as well. Uh, I look forward uh, to your comments uh, once uh, you've uh, read uh, the article, and uh, hopefully we can work together to develop this uh, stream of research further. Thank you.